What happened to the car? Why is it in pieces? Who did this? Somebody's taken all the suspension out from under it. I'm kidding. It was me. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Comedy gold here at Dylan McCool. Now the thing is, we've got a lot of work to do today. And you can see already what's happened. Now, I'm recording this intro after the fact because there's so much going on. It's hard to keep track with all these great upgrades that are happening to this car right now. Stick around to the end of the video because we not only have a new engine, new transmission, we have all sorts of great suspension and brake upgrades coming to this car on a budget. And that's what's most important for our road duration. Also, if you haven't already, go down to the link below, grab a road duration sticker while you still can because they are hot off the press and ready to go. Make sure you order one because they are fantastic and probably one of my favorite stickers. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This car will be at Moparty, I hope. This thing needs a lot of work left done to it. We have everything here needs to be replaced. Everything in here, in here needs to be replaced. Everything back here and back here and back here and over here and all this and then right here. What I'm trying to say is that we've got a lot of content to cover. So make sure you subscribe, like this video, Make sure you have your notifications turned on because there are a bunch of videos about to come out on this car. So stick around to the end of the video and see how this thing turns out and see all the new stuff we got for cheap. Brought the old Plymouth to the other side of the shop, through the back door. I'm gonna take, jack up this front, and take the wheels off, because I wanna pressure wash everything, and that includes all of the front suspension, because we've got something in the works. Left hand thread. Now we're going to take some engine e greaser and spray the fool out of everything. My new pressure washer is powered by Honda. Does that mean it has VTEC? got the Plymouth push back and we just need to take a moment to admire how much nicer it looks up underneath the hood. Now we do have some surface rust we have to deal with. Nothing crazy though, nothing that we can't fix and repaint and make look a whole lot nicer. And that's what we wanted to do, get rid of all the grease because it was terrible under here. That cross member completely covered all the steering. This idler arm is gone, we'll have to replace that, but that's okay. We have a blank canvas to work with. We did all this too to the upper and lower control arm. We have a reason for that. I'll show you right now. This is our replacement. This is a spindle and disc brake mounting assembly from a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. So like early 80s to late 80s, pretty much does the trick. And what this will do is get rid of those really overly complicated drum brakes because they have a split wheel cylinder and each half is pretty expensive to do. Not counting all the drum that you have to resurface and then having to get shoes and everything. So this will convert everything to front disc, and it'll be a little bit safer if you ask me. Now these don't just grow on trees. I had to go to a junkyard and get them. Hi, we're at a junkyard. Found a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. And what's cool about these things is that actually, believe it or not, the spindles on these cars will fit my 1958 Plymouth. 
what we can do with that is actually convert the car to front disc. So as you can see here, everything is still there. So we're gonna do that real fast, gonna knock off the spindles and do a budget disc brake conversion on this car because it's, you know, a little bit dangerous to have four wheel drum with one single reservoir master cylinder. This one's got everything you need. So we're gonna convert all this over to manual disc on the front and make it a little bit safer and nicer. Going to the junkyard, I bought the spindles, caliper mounting brackets, dust shields, hardware, and a brake proportioning valve for $75. So that saved me a bunch of money to not have to spend on a conversion kit or buying all the pieces and parts separately so it all just worked out perfectly. And that's what we're gonna do. We're about to throw all this stuff on and see how it fits. Alrighty. Oh, left hand thread. Whoa. Ew. I'll just put you back where you came from. Wow, that's disgusting. There we go. There we go. Wow. We got it out of the way. Oh, this thing's heavy. This is straight up just cast iron and junk. I've never ever had a ball joint give me that much trouble to where I had to cut it out. So, I actually ordered new ones. That's why it was okay for me to cut them out. Got new ones top and bottom. And what's cool about this and this whole situation here is that this Chrysler Fifth Avenue setup is all bolt in for the most part. I mean, there's like one little thing you gotta trim, you gotta cut the strut rod end off, but that's it. And I don't have a lot of money in this entire situation here. It's crazy. Let's go put all this stuff on and take a look at how good it's gonna look because I know for a fact this car is gonna be awesome with some disc brakes up front. Now Chrysler used a screw in ball joint right here. That's why it was okay for me to cut those out because I knew for a fact I'd be able to get the old ones out. To do that though, if you can kind of tell, it might be hard to see, but there's a, flat end, there's like four flat ends and curves on the end. You gotta buy a special socket to make that work. And that's what I have here. This is an inch and 59 60 fourths. So it's the smaller Chrysler ball joint. Once you get them both together, they work perfectly fine. Now I've seen people not realize that this is threaded. Try to press them out, try to beat them out with a hammer, uh, cut them out. You gotta be careful with this stuff. So 
It's always important to make sure you do your research before you start working on stuff, especially things from 1958. But luckily all this stuff kind of factored in and was still used well beyond this car. So screw in ball joints, very easy to remove as long as you have the right tools. Here's where things get a little bit less bolt on. Right here we have the strut rod. This basically keeps the control arm for going back and forth and walking around. We have to take this loose and cut right about here on the end of this strut rod because we have to clearance it for the bottom of the knuckle where it actually bolts into the tie rod. So I'm gonna unbolt this really quick and then just whoop right there. And that's all it takes, just cut the end of it off. Now the spindle has plenty of room to move with that tie rod end over there. We're gonna have to do some more clearancing on that bad boy, but everything looks to be good as far as getting our ball joints in. So let's get that bottom one in, and we can finally set the spindle in place. I went online and found rotors, except those rotors were like 80 or $90 a piece. So I took the ones that we had, actually got with the car, made sure they were in spec, got them resurfaced, 20 bucks a piece for that. Now most importantly too, along with our rotors, we got reman calipers. Now these, I could have taken the ones that I had, but I didn't want a chance. It breaks, you really don't want to play around with. These were 25 bucks a piece with a $2 core charge. And we got these new pads, I think they're like 15, 20 bucks a piece. So all in all, we're looking at not spending a whole lot of money to make this thing have disc brakes on the front. I'm mostly excited to see how these rotors look and then we'll bolt these on. It's so simple and you can go to any parts store and find the stuff you need if something happens. That's the beauty of it, guys. I love it. Let's see how this spindle fits. Okay, the bottom went on. Oh yeah, look at there, like a glove. With this rotor, I got new bearings, new races for the rotor itself, new seals in the back. That looks awesome. That looks so cool. Wow, okay, outer bearing and caliper. That looks fantastic. We'll tighten this spindle nut down. See exactly what we got going on. Need a cotter pin and a dust shield, but it is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the caliper on just so we can see what we got going on. Oh, that looks awesome. It's installed. Disc brakes on the car are ready and basically pretty much on. We have to button down everything, make sure everything's tight. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there right now just to make sure everything fit, but it looks really good. Really excited about this. We have a mess in here to clean up though. A lot of tools everywhere. I've started on the other side just to get it going. Uh, still got to put the spindle nut everything on, get everything buttoned down, but it looks awesome. I, everything is coming together to have this car with disc brakes. Now the rears are a different story, but that's going to be for a later date. But right now we're just going to revel in the fact that we do have something up here back and going in its place. That's the first new install that we have so far on this car. I can't believe it. And it had to be disc brakes. Look at that. 
looks awesome. And if you follow the Facebook group, you will see that I had actually put out a post about this spindle right here. The end of the threads had gotten flattened out and I couldn't fix it. So I was a little bit concerned about what to do. So my brother-in-law has a machine shop and he was able to just mill this down and make it a little bit nicer. So he basically, I mean, this part right here is already machine finished on the end. So we just carried that down with a few extra threads and it worked perfectly fine. So I was a little bit concerned about making that work, but it all worked fine. Now that's good progress. It's hot and I'm tired. Busting out ball joints is not fun. I'll tell you that right now. Getting stuff broken loose with a pickle fork and a hammer, it's pretty tough stuff, but we made it work. We got new spindles on here. We got disc brakes on the front. We've got to do a few things to make that work. And I took some other parts off of that Chrysler Fifth Avenue to make all that work. But we'll talk about that in just a second because I wanted to kind of talk about how much all this is costing us so far. So for the spindles and rotor assembly with the caliper brackets all there, 75 bucks for the pair. Then to get reman calipers, 25 a piece. And same thing with the bearings and the seals. But overall, you know, we're spending way less than what it would have cost because I was checking into aftermarket disc brakes, caliper brackets, and I think just for the brackets alone, no anything else, no calipers, no nothing. It was gonna cost like 300 bucks just for those. So for that much money, we've basically spent the same amount and still gotten the complete kit. Now we do have to do some brake hoses. We're gonna have to make some new brake lines, but to do all that, this is what I've got for the solution. Got a couple of items to make all of this work. This is the distribution block, proportioning valve, whatever you wanna call it, from that Fifth Avenue. I kept some of the brake lines because I figured I could reuse them, but this was only $7 and it worked. So this thing is gonna be the key to making sure that the disc brake system works. On top of that, we're switching master cylinders. Since this thing was like a single reservoir deal, not that safe, we're gonna to switch to a dual reservoir for disc brakes on the front. This will be the key to making all of this work and go together nicely. So combine these two and we have basically everything we need in parts to get this thing with discs in the front, drum in the rear. Now with that being said, we've got a lot of stuff to do. We have to make some brake lines fit, make them work. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this and this here just to see how things need to go. And then we can figure out where brake lines need to line up and go from that point. And a quick thank you slash shout out to Fury Gym on Facebook for giving us a detailed description with pictures on how to do this disc brake swap on these forward look cars. So without that, I wouldn't have been able to know what to do. So thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. Good morning. We are on our way to go get an engine for the 58 Plymouth. Now you're probably thinking, Dylan, why in the world would you go get another engine? We just figured this out last video, didn't we? We did, but we have another plan now. Plans always change, and that's what's great about them. This one is a factory replacement from Chrysler. It is not a reman engine. It is a factory built replacement engine. So it's a late 70s block, has great cross hatching, already has a new cam, gaskets and everything for it. So it's a no brainer, basically. We're already gonna get an engine that has all the work done to it that I'd already planned to do to the 318 I was gonna put in the 58 Plymouth. It's a good friend of mine, Jamie, and he needs a 400 big block. We're on our way to get this engine. Uh, we'll go ahead and load it up. I've got everything on the trailer to do so, and we'll head back to the shop and see what we have. Look at that. Got the engine on the stand, and it looks pretty good. Jamie had put a paint job on it with some Duplicolor paint. He's actually gonna put it in a car that I sold him. If you guys remember the low buck restoration Daisy, the 67 Dart I used to have, he actually bought that car. We're gonna put this engine in it, but decided to go a different route. This engine here is a factory replacement from Chrysler. It's a 1977 block. Jamie had already gone through, checked everything out, still had a really good cross hatching in all the bores. He put new head gaskets on it, new water pump and uh, gaskets and oil pan and gaskets, all that good stuff, seals front and rear. So the thing is, you know, pretty much ready to drop in. But what he did was help me out a lot. And what really kind of piqued my interest on this little engine right here is what's inside. Let's check it out. Look what's under here. When I pull the intake off, a camshaft. This is an actual new cam. This is from Comp. It's a Comp XE268. It's not been broken in yet. I got some lifters for it. And this already kind of gets us a step ahead because we don't have to buy that cam. 
And the good news is I was gonna put a cam in mine. I was actually gonna pull the one out of the satellite. I had an old used 340 cam. It was gonna go in its place, but now we don't have to do that. Put a double roller timing chain on it. So we're gonna pop some lifters in it, pop some push rods in it, put the intake on, and then we're able to actually use this thing for what it's intended. Now we have some work that we're gonna do to it. We have some things that we I really wanna take care of and handle before it actually goes into the car. The biggest downside for the 318 is the port size on the intake. Now, if it was a two barrel, these things got little baby intake ports. The 318s that had a four barrel, kind of like the uh, police 318s, came with the 360 heads, so that way they could open up the intake ports to accommodate for the factory four barrel intake. That's what we're gonna do. These heads are okay. They look a little worn, a little decent, but you know, pretty much anything on par with something you would find in a used engine. The only problem too is that it has two broken studs for the exhaust manifolds and these dinky little intake ports. So I'm actually gonna pull these heads off, replace them with another set of heads that I have and a four barrel intake and electronic ignition, all sorts of good stuff. So let's go through and look at the other parts we got because there's plenty of things to look through. Not only did we get the engine, but we got a set of A body headers for like a dart or a duster. Might use these down the road, who knows. That's the oil pan that came off the engine originally. It's for a B body small block. He replaced the oil pump on it and there's the old timing gear and chain. All sorts of new gaskets, freeze plugs we're gonna be using. Car mounts, so we can probably use that for the 58 Plymouth. New balancer, old balancer, pulleys, bracketry for the alternator, and then the inspection plate for the 904. I'll tell you what, we have made a mess. This car is in shambles right now, but it's good shambles, if that's even possible. We're going in the right direction, and that's really what we want to do, is keep new parts being added on, even though they're 50-year-old Chrysler parts. It's still something new to this car, and that's what we like. All the brakes are done. They're at least ready to be bolted in and tightened down for good. We just have a couple more odds and ends like brake hoses, fittings, all that garbage. But we'll knock that out in a future video. The engine, next video, will be torn down, inspected, put back together, and then we can start test fitting things. Test fitting engine mounts, test fitting transmission mount, because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort that we're going to have to tackle here soon. But at least we can get the car back on the ground and start from scratch. Now that we have everything cleaned out, fresh blank canvas to work with. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Even though it was terrible, miserable, ball joints suck. I don't like to do them, but it's something that's necessary, especially on a car that's nearly 70 years old. What are you going to do? You're going to do it. So I'm happy to say that this car is going in the right direction. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing and turning on those notifications. Road Storation stickers down in the link below. Holly Mo Party, I'll be there. Plymouth or bust, bringing a couple other cars. So make sure you go ahead and pre-register or just show up that day. It's September 16th through 18th because it is a great event and you will not want to miss it. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.